All right, guys and gals, this is going to be a fun one to kick off the new year. There's a lot going on here. We've got one main experiment and then several little experiments within the experiment. And not only are you guys going to learn something, I learned a lot in this one. And it's going to be all about lighting, light intensity outdoors, putting our cuttings in the windowsill versus LED lights. I learned a lot about LED lighting. This is going to be a good one. Let's roll the tape. Oh, and real quick, any of you want to see that original hydrangea video with the three cut method that we started back in August, click on the link down below. I'll have that video for you. And this one will make a whole lot more sense. Let's go. You guys asked for it and so now you're gonna get it <laughs> we're at august 25th and i just recently did that hydrangea video where i actually took the cutting about two months ago and got it to root and then posted it now you guys are like hey can i do that right now two months after i took the thing well let's give it a shot all right i'm gonna try and do this with one hand here we're just gonna snip off that branch right there and we'll take it in the hoop house. So the wood on this thing is definitely much more firm. You can see here, it's it's really tough and hard. This is no longer a soft wood cutting. It's, it's not, I mean, it's still green, but uh, it's gonna take a little longer to root, but I still think that this has got a great chance of rooting. It's such healthy, beautiful, vibrant growth. And if it just got into a warm environment, I can't help but think it's going to root. So I'm going to use the tip of this thing and uh, let's cut it about right here. We'll peel a couple leaves off. Do that whole 45 degree angle thing. And then we'll, uh, these are going to have to come off. I'm going to use the tip of the cutting this time. Last time I used parts further down because the top was just so wilted. It was just so soft and new growth, but this time we've got some really firmed up growth. So I'll rinse that off and we've got a nice little cutting right there. So it's been fairly cold and rainy. We've been mostly down into the, uh, down into the forties at night. It did touch 34 degrees one night. Uh, like I said, this is fairly hardened off as you can see. I've got my old bottle of Hormadin again out here because the other one's inside. I'm kind of trying to talk loud because it's raining so much and it's probably kind of noisy for you guys. Hopefully this is picking it up well. Dip into a little rooting hormone. I'm just gonna let that soak in for a few minutes while I fill these little cups up. We've got our little three cup system we used before. So we'll, uh, we'll go put some rooting medium in this one. And like I showed you before, we've got some holes in the bottom there. All right, so I've got our cup here, and I'm going to go ahead and dibble. I won't make any jokes about the dibbler police this time, or maybe that was just a joke. I haven't seen them around since I started calling them out, but let's see. We're going to put it about right there, maybe. Yeah, and we'll pack it down in there nicely. Like I said before, this is a coarse medium, so you can pack it down more. If you have a real tight medium, with a lot of peat in it, you don't want to pack it down so much because you want this to drain well. All right, so everything's done. We've got the cutting stuck. Now we've got bark filled up to the top. And I'm going to take this cup and just slide this in here. No holes in that second cup there so that water can't leak out the bottom. Like before, we're just going to turn this upside down and create a little humidity dome there. And then... Of course, this time I have my three quarter inch painter's tape out here. We're just gonna use this painter's tape again to wrap around here and seal it off. And then this will create a beautiful little environment for our cutting. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to do anything to it as I showed you in that last video. I'm just going to set this thing in a windowsill or under a light or something and uh, 
let it root. I'm gonna put one more strip around that bottom part. Let's see. Nah, it's holding okay. All right, so here we are again, about the most well-lit window in the house. I'm just gonna set this little hydrangea right in that window. We're not getting that much sun anymore, so I can set it right up on the window. You can see that's the original uh, little hydrangea cutting that I had there. I took the top off. It's just a couple days ago, so it's trying to establish and do its thing. Got a little leaf growing out of there. We'll see how it does, but let's give this a little time and see what happens. So here we are now. It's been a couple months just about. Today is December 22nd. Let's take this outside and take a look at it. All right, so like I said, today is December 22nd, and I want to clear one thing up. I actually started this little project right here on October 25th. I think in that last clip, before I cut to this little time frame, I said August. I don't know why, but it was actually October 25th. You guys had come out after that last video about this little three cut method and said, hey, can we do it right now in October, at the end of October, when plants are wanting to start going dormant? And I obliged. Here we are. So it's been right about two months and I've been watching this thing like a hawk. And because we just went from a warm environment into a freezing cold environment where it's 22 degrees out right now, everything's starting to fog up. But let's take a look at this guy. Look at this little cutting. It has got roots all throughout there. You can see them right there. Isn't that beautiful? It's got, it, it must have exploded along that stem and hopefully this will pick it up. We've got so much humidity from the warmth building up, but uh, there are roots. There's some more right there. There are roots all throughout this cup. There's a bunch on this side. You can see, I need to get rid of that humidity there. Anyway, you guys can see these roots all throughout here. And this is a healthy, beautiful cutting. It's still in the same condition as it was when I stuck it two months ago. It's almost like it's in a state of suspended animation. I mean, the thing has not changed hardly at all. The only difference is, well, one, you got roots all over this thing. And two, there's some top growth in there that's starting to open up and just start to want to form. It's a super healthy little guy. And now the only real question is, what do we do with it from here? And this is a question that's been going through my mind for a couple weeks now because these roots started about two weeks ago. But I'm going, do I leave it in the windowsill or do I put it under a light? What should we do with it? Do we leave it in this little three cup system here and not mess with it at all and just see if it makes it till spring? Or do I take it out of this and acclimate it and just let it start growing under my grow light? What do you guys want to do with this little rooted cutting? I mean, are you curious about one aspect or another? Let me know in the comments down below because over the last couple of weeks, I've been thinking and I'm just completely stumped on what I want to do with it. I'm inclined to put it in that tent under the light and just let it grow in a nice, warm, nice environment. But it's doing well. And that's another point. This thing is doing really, really well with the natural light from the window, window even though it's winter time. And that surprised me. I assumed that since it was getting darker and darker as we headed into winter, that this guy wasn't going to do any good at all. I thought that the light, the amount of light was really going to impact it in a negative way. It did not. This thing rooted like crazy and it's, it's obviously healthy and viable and growing well. So I learned something here too. So I'm going to take you inside here and I'm going to show you not only this guy here now, but I'm going to show you those other two cuttings we did in the previous hydrangea video with the three cup method and show you what they look like. Because remember, we put one of them in the tent and we put one of them or left one of them in the windowsill. So now we can compare and see which one did better. So before we go any further, this obviously answered our question. Can we root this thing right now in October, the end of October? Absolutely, yes, we can. As long as the cutting material is viable and healthy, you know, everybody's area is going to differ a little bit. Some people might get freezing temps in September. I don't. I didn't get freezing weather until somewhere in November. And so the material was still healthy and viable when I took it here in the Puget Sound region in late October. All right, let's head in there and let's check out those other two cuttings from like four months ago in August. So I brought them back in, just stuck this little guy right back into the windowsill. I love how good that looks. And now that uh, that condensation has gone down, you can see those roots a little better. Anyway, it's got roots all throughout there. 
just starting to grow down better and better. But you can see this one right over here was the one of them that we did last August, August 25th. So over four months ago, we took that cutting and you can see where it's at now. Let's get this in that tent so you can see it a little bit better. So you can see I've got a real mess going on in here right now, but these little cuttings were taken August 25th and that was the original double cut method that we did. And I left this one in the windowsill and put this one in the grow tent. Now we've got to talk about the lighting in here because Jim, my buddy over in Ohio, taught me something inadvertently about my lighting in this tent. He was growing some mulberries in the same exact tent with the same exact light or a very similar light and doing it a little bit differently. But let's look at these real quick. So this hydrangea was grown in the windowsill the entire time. It rooted there. I've left it in there all this time, four months. This one right here was rooted inside this grow tent. And if you remember, the original leaves on it turned purple and then eventually fell off. And this new green growth started growing here right at the base out of those new buds. And it is looking absolutely gorgeous it didn't start out that way though. Let's talk about the lighting. So I couldn't figure out why in this grow tent I have these leaves that keep turning purple on all of my plants. Now that's a begonia. It's supposed to have purple leaves, but I'm talking about my hydrangea and some of the plants that I rooted last year. And then I saw my buddy Jim growing in the same exact tent and his light was way up by the top of the tent there and he had it turned down at about a 25% intensity. Now my light, I'm gonna zoom this out a little bit. My light was hanging about halfway down in the tent, not all the way at the top like it is now. And I had it at 100% intensity. Now a lot of people uh, last winter when I showed those videos said it's a nutrient defi deficiency. There were a lot of different reasons they gave for why there could be purple leaves. But I saw Jim growing those mulberries so successfully and I thought, you know what, that's gotta be it. It's just the intensity of these LEDs. So I raised that thing all the way to the top of the tent, turned it down by 50%, and it still grew beautiful plants. Now I've pulled some out of here and I've got made all, these, all the room for cuttings here, but you can see this little hydrangea in the very beginning, when I had that intense light on there, those leaves were coming out small and not as healthy. As soon as I raised it up and turned the intensity down, it all of a sudden started putting on this new growth and looking really beautiful. The purple color went away and it got healthier and healthier and just started growing these massive roots. And I am convinced more than ever now that the plants just grow healthier under the intense LED lights when they're raised all the way up to the top and just turned down. They just don't need that same intensity. So thank you, Jim, for showing me that. Now, let's talk about this little guy here for a second, because this one was also taken four months ago in August. That was the original one alongside this. And this little guy here, you can see it's been sitting in the windowsill all this time because the light intensity has gone down over time as the sun set in the horizon and we're now into December. It's just not getting the lighting or the quality of lighting. And so it's still got that one same long tap root going down and it's got a few other roots throughout here. Not a whole lot. The new growth started coming on and it looks healthy. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this little cutting. It looks perfectly healthy. The original leaf never dropped. I think one side did, but this one never turned purple or dropped because it wasn't under the intense lights, but it's just not looking quite as good as this one I've got grown in the tent. So what does that show us? That shows us that yes, you can grow them in your windowsill all winter, but once you get past a certain point in the, you know, the fall, Eventually, that sunlight coming through the window in the winter time is just not going to be enough, and you're going to need to move it into a grow tent to reach its fullest potential. I mean, these things, they're the same little cutting taken at the same time, and look at the difference. I mean, the roots here compared to these roots here, I mean, that's just amazing. That's what the power of these LED lights can do, and I figured out my problem now, thanks to Jim, on the top growth with these LED lights. So now the only question is, what do I do with this cutting right here? This one I took two months after these. These were August 25th. This one was taken October 25th. And the reason for that was 
after doing these two cuttings, going through the whole video and then posting the video October 23rd or 4th, something like that, you guys screamed at me and said, we want to know if we can do this right now in October. So I took another cutting and we've waited all this time. Here we are now in December and you can see that this thing's been growing in the windowsill just fine as long as it's got that cover over it. Now that's another thing to consider. This one's been lagging behind. This one's still doing really well, even though it's in the windowsill. The roots though are not, I mean, they're, they're starting to grow on there. They're doing good. They're coming out. But I think things are really starting to slow down and they're not doing quite what that one is doing right here. So I think the only thing we can do as I look at this more and more is we got to put this in the tent. Now, there's only one other experiment we could try right now that I'm just kind of wondering what you guys want to do. And I might just leave this in the windowsill for now until you answer me in the comments down below. But what do we do with this guy? We could try just leaving it completely sealed like this in the container in the windowsill all winter long and see if it makes it all the way until spring or we could take that container off we could put it in the tent here and just start letting it grow and do the same thing as that what do you guys want to do with that let me know down below and we'll kind of make a decision based on your responses and see where we're going to go from here so there it is, our three little beautiful hydrangea cuttings, and it seems like you can root them just about any time you want through the fall, as long as the material stays viable. So we'll see how they go. I think I'm going to put this one back in the windowsill. I'm going to leave this one in the grow tent, and you guys let me know what you want to do with that one. So I hope you learned something from this. I know I've learned a lot, especially about this whole lighting situation with the LEDs and my purple leaves. Thank you very much, Jim. You the man. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. I'll see you in the next video. Adios.